Today I'm going to do the one thing that I never do on this channel and that is a simple unboxing of the VS410 Phoenix, a new plastic portal axle rig in a kit form from Vanquish Products. I never do unboxings on this channel. I always find that unboxings are sort of boring to watch, to tell you the truth. But I bought this right when the VS410 Phoenix came out. I have not unboxed it yet, and I have not been able to even wrench because I got shingles, uh, man, three weeks ago at this point, and I can't turn a wrench with this hand. So it's just eating at me that I can't look at this rig yet. So instead of doing what I would normally do, which is essentially build it and then just do a review of it driving, I'm going to do an unboxing of the kit, and I'm really excited for this rig. I've wanted a VS410 for a long time. The price point has kind of set me off of it. I have a lot of rigs. I also spend as much as a VS410 on a lot of my rigs, but I don't do it all at once. I buy the pieces one at a time. So let's, let's break this seal together. So, what's really cool about this rig, this has dig and overdrive in the transmission. That was the big sell for me, is that after the TRX4 came out, I realized, yeah, sometimes I want to be a button flipper. I, I want to be a lever pusher. Uh, I like fiddling with my rig a lot. Uh, and I used to not like that. I used to hate two speeds, but I have been won over. And this one isn't a two speed, but the button pushing, having selectable dig ratio on there is really cool and then having the dig where it locks out or you can keep it in two wheel drive you can do burnouts i mean come on come on this is going to be a really cool rig so let's see what other features do we have here we have the vfd twin which is their forward motor mount extremely forward and low forward uh motor mount you have the uh let's see what they'd be called the bearing carriers on the inside where you could at least on the previous ones, you could change your overdrive ratio with it, but now they have it to where you can overdrive between 6.5, 33%, and then go into freewheel, which is two wheel drive. They have portal axles on these with plastic housings, which brings down the cost quite a bit. The new F10 portal front axle, it has an offset uh, pumpkin to it, which uh, you can see, let's see, there we go. You can see that the drive, the pinion and ring is offset. It's also a high pinion, a high point gear set. Now let's see, 38 gears, 30 slash eight. So a lot of reduction in that. They've probably got a two to one reduction on their portals itself. So we're looking at uh, estimated about seven to one ratio. I haven't done the math yet, but seven to one ratio on that. And on top of that, they have m5 threaded stub axles on the outside and that is usually the weak point in these rigs it takes the most amount of torque on that stub axle and whenever you're rolling down a hill or if you crash that stub axle takes a whole lot of it because your tires are out there they're taking the hits as you roll and so if you bend something that's actually going to be what bends or ends up shearing off and yeah so they went to m5 on there they upsized to a five millimeter stub very nice. What else do they include on here? Chromoly chrom axle shafts. Uh, Chromoly axle shafts. The offset high pinion front axle, which I already mentioned. Offset front drive line, which is going to be really good for people that are using this for a comp rig base, actually. Because uh, a lot of the new comp rig designs have a really low slung motor in the front, just like this does, of course. But with a lot, a lot less like bells and whistles, they're really lightweight type stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I got distracted there talking about comp rigs. High pinion rear axle, which is a centered pinion. Uh, aluminum wheel hexes. Six millimeter stub shafts on the rear. Ooh. Ooh, or is it no it's six millimeter stub shaft that are threaded m5 that's beefier even beefier than i thought vanquish has always done a really good job of their engineering so it's not really a surprise that they went through all of this treble so to speak uh, a lot of features that i mean y'all are probably interested in it but let's just you know let's just gloss over it and i want to look at the interior i want to see how this is packaged up this looks fantastic I'm excited for this. The last thing that I need is another kit because I'm behind on my kit builds by like two or three at least, but I couldn't let this one pass by. So, unpainted body, 
We got plastic beadlocks, it looks like. Oh, they already got the beadlock rim on the inside of the tire. Let's see how these tires feel. Mmm. Mm, nothing like that new kit smell. This actually smells a little similar to the old axial racing kits where those tires were just so overwhelming. And these are pretty overwhelming. Ooh, nice and sticky too. Real sticky. Look how sticky those tires are. Uh, there's still mold release on it as uh, evidenced by the shininess. So what I would recommend is you take some simple green to these and... Uh, or you just run them on the rocks, whatever. But these are real sticky. These look nice. Also pretty narrow tread profile, which is becoming more common in the industry these days. I like to see that. It is more scale. And it also for these rigs is typically easier to tune. Instead of having a really wide patch, which doesn't look scale to begin with, the narrower your patch is, the higher contact pressure you're gonna have. And so you can actually run stiffer foams and you don't have as much sidewall flex and you still get the same amount of traction. All right, so I'm not gonna actually take most of these parts out because I don't wanna get them all mixed up. But it looks like we have a scale radiator in here. It even has little scale fan blades. Oh, uh, well, it's pretty flexible plastic for that. Bag H, the clear unpainted body, which has an interior, very nice. Oh, those seats are pretty high. <laughs> The bottom of the seat comes <laughs> comes up to like right there. Wish they got to do on this because they've got all of this function underneath the body. But it is kind of funny. Like you, you couldn't put a driver in there. It, he would have to be truncated in half. Uh, but the, the seat bottoms are like right at the window base. Or maybe that's just because this is shoved up in here for, for uh, shipping reasons. Maybe it actually ends up installing much lower. Maybe I'm making some... Uh... Okay, it doesn't really install much lower. It's... Uh... It is what it is. It's really hard to have a rig that is completely scale looking and has a full interior. It's practically an impossibility with today's rigs, but you know, it, it, it is something that's always kind of funny when you see that half interior. So uh, these are the rear quarter panels and it looks like bumper. Kind of cool that everything is separate like that. Ooh, look at side shot, the way that they did the frame kind of interested in that it looks like there'd be a like a real bed in back oh i should probably have paid attention to more of the marketing that they pushed out there but this will be a fun kit and maybe this is something that i could just get my son into with me and we can have a project together or my daughter she's a little younger she doesn't quite have the hand dexterity for a lot of these small screws but my son is eight years old. He's getting really good at, uh, what are them things called we used to have when we were kids? Legos. He's really good at Legos. All right, D, it looks like a lot of the screws in here, transmission parts, the uh, centered gears, it appears, maybe machined teeth on centered gears. Nothing wrong with centered gears as long as the contact patch is wide enough. And this is the VFD transmission, and they have had a lot of wheel time on that so there's really nothing different in here that's like untested and that we should be suspect of so to speak uh, we got all of our side plastics it looks like our bed sides bed frame whatever you want to call it really cool actually oh a steering wheel yes and this plastic is uh, relatively flexible for these parts which it should be you don't want your your frame snap on there it's better if it just flexes here's our shock bag bag e Ooh, those are new shocks though little scale guys it looks like old turn down tlt shocks or something like that nice i have heard really good things about these as well watching the uh the old facebook groups and stuff we got our our, our c bag much harder plastic in the c bag here it feels like a high glass content nylon just through the bag. We can do a scrape test. These are gonna be our lowers. This is like the belly pan right here underneath the motor. I can just tell visually it's gonna be a high nylon content, but we'll, we'll give you the scrape test. Yeah, you hear that? Real high nylon, didn't, hardly made a scratch in there. And then here's a, uh, what is, feels like a little softer plastic. Yeah, maybe not, whatever. Let's see, I can, oh no, that's high nylon. It snaps right off of the, the sprue or the whatever it's called. 
That's one way that you can tell if it's high nylon or not is it'll just snap off and you don't have to get your side shears out. Not that y'all care exactly what the glass content is of these, but yeah, there's that. Oh, we got all our sliding shafts, plastic sliding shafts. Absolutely nothing wrong with plastic sliding shafts. In fact, I prefer that in a lot of my rigs because when the plastic twists, it's easy to replace, it's easy to get to, and you don't have to worry about opening up your transmission or your axles when you have a brake. So I kind of like those plastic sliding shafts. No reason to replace them with metal unless everything else is beefed up and maybe you're in a competition and you don't want a chance of twisting those too. So then you snap a ring and pinion instead. So you know, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna go out, then you go out big. These are the links. These are definitely stainless. At least they feel the weight of stainless and that keeps your weight nice and low. Good of them to do that. Also a little bit more expensive to machine than aluminum ones. So they're not skimping out on this kit. This is a really high quality kit. Also has their own rod ends at this point, it looks like. I would be interested if the width of these balls are of the axial standard or the Traxxas standard. They look a little bit wider, so I'm going to assume that it's the uh, newer axial standard that they made the width from. Here is our frame. It is an actual C-channel. Harley Designs would never allow us to have a Vanquish kit that was a machined, essentially, TVP, but these are stamped rails, and I'm going to assume that they are steel, just based off the weight and the flexibility. Yeah, these are definitely steel stamped C channels. They look good. Ooh, these have some features in them too. Probably they have them on all the VS410s, but it's not just a 2D rail. It actually has some has some three-dimensional stamped features in it, which is really cool. And are they, oh yeah, it's even, it's got a little shape, they're shapely. These are shapely ax <laughs> axles, these aren't axles. <laughs> shapely rails, chassis. All right, all right, that's enough time looking at those. Last but not least, we have our axle bags, A and B, what we should have looked at first. All right. So these are definitely machined. These are not centered, but these are machine parts. <laughs> they got lightweight holes in them too. Uh, and it looks like they got these brass inserts, which I have read are a little bit loose on there, but these are to prevent overflexing. They also add weight to the axle, but these prevent overflexing of your housing, which is when you have brakes, especially on a high nylon content axle. So. I'm sure you're probably going to see or have seen people, you know, kind of poo poo in these because they're not a really tight fit into the axle, but these will still prevent brakes all the same as one that is tight in the housing. May actually be better at preventing brakes because you get a little bit of flex, but you don't get enough flex to where you have the brake and it transfers the load onto that piece. If it is too tight into the housing, then what you'll have is a stress riser that arises from the very end of it because you don't get any flex in the housing and all of the load is actually put on the tip of that insert inside the housing. So if it was, uh, you know, let's, let's say inserted to where, I'll just pull this out of the package. I know where this, this one's gonna go. Back into bag A. Maybe I'll just test it out and then we'll call it good and I, I will move on with my day. So we're going to take out our plastic housing. Ooh, that feels good too. That is some hard plastic and it looks pretty beefy as well. Like they, they integrated enough features into it, so to speak. You know, this entire top of the housing is just beefed up. And it doesn't have any uh, hard corners, no sharp radiuses, nothing like that. It's kind of an even transition. What are these called? Uh, Y'all full-size guys will know. Trusses or something like that, I think. But the truss is integrated into it and it has no sharp bends to it. There's no places where you would have a force kind of radiating through that would cause an issue. So really, I mean, for an injection molded housing, that looks good. That's, uh, and that's why I got it. I, I know the quality that Vanquish is gonna put out at this point, so. And yet they still impress me when I get the kit in hand. All right, so here's these uh, brass inserts. This 
is not only for weight, but also to help us avoid breakage potentially. So it is a little loose. Of course, it's not inserted all the way either. I'm assuming that it's probably going to be a little tighter down in here and then it'll have a little bit of play on the outside. And there's going to be a little bit of flex in the housing this way and you don't just have two hard points. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, it is actually a press fit. All the uh, grumblings online of them being loose. Is it being loose just slightly on the outside? But that's a nice pr press fit on the inside, which gives it support. It also is right up against that bearing pocket, so you're going to have a lot of stress distribution through this entire part of the plastic. And then you'll have a little bit of flex in the plastic, which, I mean, you're going to have to be bashing it hard to get flex in the housing like that. But there is a little bit of flex in the housing, and then that tube contacts the outside, so you're not going to get a break anywhere in between. There's way too much material. Actually, it's on the inside of that part right there, so... Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any problem with that. There, were, there was definitely some grumblings about those, but I'm not worried at all. That looks good. Oh, yeah, there, I can even see on this side, there's a stepped recess that accepts that brass insert. So, yep, now, uh, do with that information what you may. Maybe you're going to buy the aftermarket brass inserts for these instead of keeping these, but honestly... I don't really see that it would be necessary because, yeah, those do actually fit tight in there and there's just a little bit of play on the outside. But by the time you're flexing these axles hard enough to make that brass take some load, you're going to be having other issues more than likely with your rig, pulling out rod ends and, and such like that. Or you just need to get some aluminum axle housings if you're going to be bashing that hard. Beef uh, tubes or... Uh, let's see, there were so many different names for them over the years. Uh, beef tubes is the one that does come to mind. They, they are useful on some axles, but in the end, if I really want to bash my rig that hard, I'm going to go to an aluminum axle, a machined aluminum axle, not a cast one that you would find on eBay or whatever. It's very nice. So overall, the quality of the parts is not surprising for me coming from Vanquish. Oh, I guess I should put all the parts back in there, huh? Um... And this is going to be really fun. I'm going to bring it to the house. I'm going to see if my son can help me with the assembly because my arm is still not recovered enough that I could do this sort of work, unfortunately. But, you know, c'est la vie. We never know what our health is going to be like. And if I can double time this with some extra time with a the kid, then that sounds like a win-win situation for me. And, of course, as usual, I'm not going to be able to get all this into the box but i'm just gonna set this body aside anyways because <laughs> i'm not gonna get to painting it right away and i'm probably gonna go the lazy route and use cryolon fusion because it sticks really well and it's gonna be black and i'll probably put some uh, rust and steel colored paint on the inside and then paint it on the outside so that when it scratches it'll look like a real rig cool well, I hope this unboxing was more entertaining than I usually find them to be and that it answered some of your questions that you may or may not have had about this. But I'm excited to put this together. Yes, indeed. So if you do have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get to them. And in the meantime, have a great day.